Tonight, the House Judiciary Committee rejected Karl Rove's offer to respond in writing rather than testify under oath and in person about the case of convicted Democrat Don Siegelman, the former governor of Alabama. I'll ask Florida Congressman Robert Wexler, a senior member on that committee, about whether they will now follow through with a threat to subpoena Rove to testify. And Governor Siegelman, recently released from a federal prison pending an appeal, is also here. But first, some background on the case. Former Alabama Governor Don Siegelman was a rare breed, a popular Democratic governor in a red state from 1998 to 2002. After narrowly losing his re-election bid, he was preparing a political comeback just a year later. That's when Alabama prosecutors stepped in, bringing federal corruption charges against him, charges that were quickly thrown out. Then, just over a year later, they went after him again. This time he was convicted, but just on seven of 32 charges. The judge imposed a seven-year prison sentence, effective that day. Then this Republican came forward and claimed she had heard leading Alabama Republicans talk of Rove's involvement in the case. Bill Canary said that he was going to get his girls to take care of Don Siegelman. Bill Canary was an old friend of Carl Rove, and Simpson claimed under oath that she heard conversations linking Rove and Canary to a campaign to bring down Siegelman. Her account is now being challenged by Rove and others. But it's not just Simpson who's expressed concerns about this case. 52 former state attorneys general, Democrats and Republicans, have demanded that Congress investigate. Now the House Judiciary Committee has stepped in and wants Rove to testify about these allegations. Last month, Rove's attorney Robert Luskin told us Rove would testify if subpoenaed. But Luskin later said Rove would only speak to the committee and only if it was not transcribed and not under oath. Now Luskin's saying Rove would respond in writing to the committee, but again, thus far refusing to testify under oath. Siegelman's now free on bond after an appeals court stepped in in March, ruling his legal team raised, quote, substantial questions of law or fact. All right, uh, Congressman Wexler, let me ask you now. Um, the, the time has passed. You said you were giving uh, Robert Luskin, the attorney for Karl Rove, until May the 12th uh, to voluntarily testify. They basically said no. Are you going to subpoena Rove? Well, we would much prefer that Mr. Rove voluntarily agree to appear before the House Judiciary Committee, as would any other American citizen. But my view is if he refuses to come voluntarily, we must first subpoena him. And if he refuses to honor the subpoena, then the full House of Representatives must hold Mr. Rove in contempt of Congress. And then we must ask the Attorney General to enforce the contempt of Congress subpoena or citation. And if the Attorney General refuses to do so, which Mr. Mukasey said previously before the Judiciary Committee that he would, yeah. then I believe, reluctantly, we need to literally uphold the checks and balances that this administration has so abused. Right. And then we need to go the extraordinary step of issuing an inherent contempt all right. of Congress. Congre let, me, let me just tell you this, all right, because you know his lawyer has been claiming that we took his comments out of context. Uh, he, he has said that, that he never basically said that he was going to testify if subpoenaed. Let me be very clear, okay, because we read this on the program before. I want to read you the email exchange we had with Robert Luskin, the attorney for Karl Rove. So there's no ambiguity. On April 7th at 4 o'clock, we asked him, will your client Karl Rove consider testifying under oath about the Siegelman case? He responded at 424. I'm not sure I understand the question. Whether or not there's an investigation or whether or not he's asked to testify are not matters that are within his control. We responded at 459. Sorry, let me be more clear. Will Karl Rove agree to testify if Congress issues a subpoena to him as part of the investigation into the Siegelman case? He responded two hours later. Sure, although it seems to me that the question is somewhat offensive. It assumes he has something to hide, even though Governor Siegelman's uncorroborated assertions aside, there's literally no credible evidence whatsoever to substantiate his charges. I would hope that you'd get around to mentioning that fact. I wanted to read that to you just so there's no, there's no ambiguity here. That was the entirety of my exchange with him. It sounds to me like he was saying he would testify if subpoenaed. Well... The, the truth is, Dan, you've done an excellent job of investigative reporting in this matter, uh, and that is what he said. But even beyond your discussion, 
no American citizen has the right to ignore a congressional subpoena. Not right. Karl Rove, not anyone else. <laughs> Let me ask uh, Governor Siegelman. Governor Siegelman, what are the questions that you want uh, Representative Wexler and others to, to ask of Karl Rove? Well, I think they need to ask uh, whether or not Karl Rove had discussions with anyone regarding the uh, political impact of a prosecution of Don Sigelman. It, you know, this case was brought to trial one month before the Democratic primary. I don't think that was an accident either. Uh, I do want to commend uh, the Congressman and, and, uh, and Chairman Conyers for the excellent job that they have done in, in pressing this issue forward. But Karl Rove and this administration have, have thumbed their nose at Congress. They have clearly engaged in, in systematic and calculated abuses of power relating not just to the uh, abuse of the Department of Justice, but to other areas of importance to the American people. And Congress, rightfully so, should press Karl Rove to come and testify under oath and answer these questions. And let me just read you the three of the, I, I wrote, Karl Rove wrote me a nasty letter about our coverage. You both may know that. I wrote him a letter back asking him a series of questions that I thought he needed to answer. I asked him, did you speak to your friend Bill Canary or anyone in Alabama about anything relating to the Siegelman case? Did you ever ask anyone else to communicate with any official in the Justice Department about the Siegelman case? Have you never talked to the White, if you say you've never talked to the White House about the case. If that's true, why would executive privilege apply uh, as he claims? I, I mean, I, I assume Congressman Wexler, you've got the series of questions that you're ready to go to ask Karl Rove. Uh, we do, and, and Governor Siegelman is correct. What we are witnessing is a pattern of abuse of power by the Bush administration. It happened when they fired uh, several U.S. attorneys for political reasons, and Mr. Bolton and Ms. Myers refused to testify before Congress. Yeah. It now is happening with the issue of torture. We have yeah. uh, asked, yeah. subpoenaed, the vice president's chief of staff to come before Congress right. to answer whether or not the administration illegally ordered the use of torture. Right. Uh, it's time Let for Congress to stand up and get Go answers. Governor Siegelman, what else can is there something else we can do in connection with this investigation? I mean, what else? What else well, can the media do? Well, I think that, that, that you're doing everything you can do, but other other uh, outlets of the media, national media, need to remind Congress that they are our only hope, that there are three branches of government. And Congress has to stand up and speak out for the people of this country. This, as I've heard Congressman Wexler say this, this is the time and this is the moment for Congress to stand up and be counted on this issue. All right. And again, I've said this before. I have to tell you, and I, I know that Governor Siegelman is not going to love to hear me say this, but to me, the issue of whether they prosecuted him because he's a Democrat is far more important to this country than the actual guilt or innocence, which a jury resolved, and, and Governor Siegelman and I can talk about that another time. Absolutely. But the bottom line is that if he was prosecuted because he's a Democrat, that in and of itself is an issue. Congressman Wexler, Governor Siegelman, thanks very much for coming on. Thank